Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's talk about the first of two COMT pictures, COMT slow. Remember that this means the COMT enzyme is less efficient than normal, so the catecholamines it's supposed to break down stay in circulation longer. This leads to high neurotransmitters, including dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. It also means high levels of hormones, including the stress hormones, which are really those same neurotransmitters when they operate outside of the brain, and also estrogens. This is not dependent on any one particular COMT polymorphism, but rather the sum of all your COMT polymorphisms. But again, I want to caution you against assuming you know what's going on based on a piece of paper. A genetic report can only show you the genes as written, and not the ways your body has activated or silenced those genes, which is called epigenetics. That can only be observed in real life. So if you're trying to determine if your COMT is fast or slow, the most helpful thing to look at is personality and symptoms. Also, there's research showing that the presence of estrogen may inhibit the COMT enzyme further, meaning that women with a slow COMT would be more strongly affected than men. Some signs and symptoms that you have a slow COMT include high neurotransmitter symptoms. So things like enthusiasm, exuberance, self-confidence, ability to focus for long periods of time, and maybe some workaholism. These neurotransmitters do double duty as stress hormones, and so we also see difficulty calming down in stressful situations, dislike of overstimulation, noise, lights, chatter in the work environment, chaotic or messy spaces, hard time falling asleep easy irritability, and often worse with caffeine or other stimulants. COMT also affects estrogens, and so people with slow COMT often have glowing skin, strong bones, may have started their menses younger than their peers, symptoms related to high estrogen such as fibroids, PMS, and fibrocystic breasts, higher tendency towards hormonal cancers including breast and prostate, And higher estrogen status is generally a little harder to see in men, but in extreme cases, it can cause swelling of the breast tissue, erectile dysfunction, and delayed puberty, but milder cases are often harder to detect. Remember that other gene SNPs can affect these same neurotransmitters and hormones, but if you have this symptom picture, then addressing the situation is appropriate no matter what your gene report says. The COMT slow genotype carries with it some superpowers as well. On a surface level, the COMT variant gets divided into warrior and worrier pictures. COMT slow, because of the high level of stress hormones, falls into the worrier category. That does not sound like a superpower, but stick with me. People with slow COMT actually have higher levels of dopamine in their prefrontal cortex, which is associated with executive function, decision-making, understanding consequences, impulse control, and coordinating complex behaviors, not to mention creativity. In studies, higher dopamine in this area of the brain allowed people to excel at these tasks, especially notable in creativity. Those with the COMT VAL158 met 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 allele, which is COMT slow typically, generally showed greater abilities in divergent thinking, meaning they were able to create more different solutions to a given problem in a short amount of time than someone without this polymorphism. So while those of us with the COMT slow variant You can't see my hand, but it is up right now. We do have the potential to feel stress more acutely than our COMT fast counterparts, but we can also think of 50 ways to solve a problem in no time at all. Interestingly, the slow COMT state also has better cognitive stability, meaning the ability to stay focused on a task for longer periods of time, where our COMT fast counterparts are far better at flipping between different tasks effectively. So let's talk about managing a slow COMT. Step one, as it always seems to be on this show, is balance your methylation. As we discussed last week, the COMT enzyme is dependent on healthy methylation. So the first thing you would do in this situation, just like in COMT fast, is to optimize that. Get your basic B vitamins, find the best B12 for you, add in a methylation driver like 5-LMTHF or SAMI. Optimize your doses of those things based on how you actually feel and how your symptoms look on a symptom tracker. 
You can get a free symptom tracker, if you want, by signing up for my newsletter at tohealthwiththat.com. Keep in mind that with a slow COMT, your neurotransmitters look a lot like you're on a small dose of upper all the time. And so overdoing your methylation drivers can take that away, flipping your COMT slow to a COMT fast. And frankly, nobody likes anything that downs their uppers. So beware of taking too much or pushing this process too hard. We've got to be flexible and responsive in dosing methylation drivers and not get stuck on a target amount we're supposed to take. Step two is optimize your diet. Protein boosts dopamine, which is something that you don't need if you've got a slow COMT, especially at night when you're trying to get to sleep. Focus on a higher protein meal at breakfast, but lower at lunch and dinner. Slow COMT folks do best with a veggie and carb-weighted dinner. Adding in high magnesium foods helps as well, because magnesium is one of the best nutrients for a slow COMT. Look for dark green leafy vegetables, low-fat dairy, nuts, and legumes. Fortunately, these foods are also high in natural folate, so you're eating them anyway, right? Right? Boost your fiber. Help your body to eliminate those excess estrogens by eating lots of fiber, which actually helps to bind them in your gut and make sure they get eliminated. Step three, in terms of balancing this process, is to calm, stay calm. Such a big part of this picture involves high stress hormones, and so minimizing stress is crucial to keeping balance. This means declutter your home and keep it tidy. A calm, chaos-free environment helps to reduce stress hormones. Go for quiet or soothing background music when you're trying to focus or to wind down. Meditate. Take a minute to breathe deeply, or try the technique Martha Beck outlines in an episode of her Bewildered podcast with Rowan Mungan. It's really nice. Basically, it involves giving yourself a little hug around your rib cage and then taking a few deep breaths into that, right? Breathe into that hug and really let your stress hormones come down. And when you open your eyes, try to look, instead of at one thing, try to find your gaze connecting with all of the white and red and yellow things in the room at the same time, right? So that broad gaze. It's really hard to have high stress hormones and a broad gaze at the same time. Step four is balance your hormones. So while balancing hormones is an entire podcast season in itself, there are a few constants. I mentioned fiber in the diet section, and if there's only one thing you can do, fiber should be it. Otherwise, seed cycling. It's far too much to go into right here, but there is a link in the show notes to a detailed article. It's a lovely way to help balance and regulate hormones safely using just an alternation of different types of seeds, like flax seeds and pumpkin seeds. Bump up your broccoli. Broccoli and other cruciferous veggies like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and kale specifically help to detox estrogen. If you're going for bonus points, look for broccoli sprouts for the win. Avoid plastics and pesticides, many of which mimic estrogens in your body. Getting these artificial estrogens out will help your body deal with your natural estrogens more easily. Thanks so much for listening today, and next week we'll dive right into the COMT fast picture. Please subscribe so you don't miss any episodes, and if you like what we're doing here, I would really appreciate it if you'd leave a review. Thanks so much!